All right, check out my new kit. Tiny little monitor from Atomos, the Ninja 5. But what's unique is the SDI module attached to it. Now I looked online and I couldn't find anything regarding this. So I thought about making a video. It's coming up. Now welcome back. Um, very quickly if you're new here, hit the subscribe button. Just make sure you don't get hurt. Fiddle the like button and ring the notification button so you get notified when we have a new video, okay? I had already made a video about the Adamus Shogun 7. I did do an unboxing and all that and it's a great, great, um, device great awesome awesome the dynamic ring on that stuff is very good the size the screen i in fact when i got the adamus 7 then i realized that i might just need the sumo 19 because um you can't defeat the fact that you need for a professional set that is you really need a large screen for monitoring. Actually, the larger you get, you know, if you can bring a home theater to, to your location, you're gonna get a home, I mean, a lot better result. As long as you can see in the same resolution as the cameras or, you know, the dynamic range, whatever screen that can show that, that dynamic but range, that's what I'm saying. But, but sometimes you just wanna go, you know, easy. You just wanna go small. And there's no better way to do that than with a with a small device that not only has the ability to show you the dynamic range of what you're recording but also can record and save your camera the trouble of recording time recording format overheating and any other issues your camera might be experiencing. Now, I don't really have challenges for this one, except that it will not give me 10 uh, bit 422 internally. So, I get it externally. I don't have to step down to HDMI, which has its own limitations, but with this module, I can stay on my recording and everything that I enjoyed with the Shogun 7, I can enjoy with this unit. And hint, we will be switching with the Ninja 5 and I'll explain to you why I think so. Stick with me to the end of this video, trust me. You know, so when I mount it on this guy now, I'm not gonna be afraid of the weight and stuff like that. Why would you want this one over the Shogun 7? Number one, it is more comfortable. The size is awesome. You can beat this. Two, it does what that one does. Three, it's cheap. But good thing is that the Shogun 7 came down recently um, from 1002 plus to um, 999. This is a lot more efficient. While the Shogun 7 has its place, besides the switching abilities, it has its place on location on a professional set. Or if you have a reliable way of mounting it there, you might just want to stick to that but this guy is all around i would use it on location on any set it is applicable um only on the more professional like if i'm shooting a film or a short film i will really need the shogun 7 or um sumo 19 somewhere you know that's the sumo 19 is probably the minimum i will go on a real shoot you know, we'll have hands, we'll have people, you know, it won't be on a one-man shoot though, but if I'm gonna do on a one-man, even if it's a feature and I'm doing a one-man shoot, then the Shogun is the seven, is the biggest or largest I would wanna have on set, just cause convenience, but I really wanna get a bigger picture. This will still be on set, but the Shogun will probably be like, you know, what we depend on. This will be here and the Shogun will be like the director's monitor, something like that. So, how I will mount it. So, this is the Manfrotto arm. Um, very reliable, very good. It held the Shogun real well. It's just that I, um, I didn't like the position of this for the Shogun, really. 
I wanted it on the side away. I just want to monitor my picture and have it on the side. Maybe the director, or if I'm on the side, I can see it. But this one is enough for me. After all the framing, after we've seen the dynamic range, I'd rather still look on this one while shooting. Okay? And that, for reference, just for change of scenes and stuff like that. So, um, but this with this one, you can only mount it here. That's my only limitation. It's not gonna be a problem for this because this is way lighter. Now, mounting the Shogun 7 here will make this one top heavy. You know, you'll feel the weight because that's a real heavy device. You'll feel the weight when you mount this on your shoulder. So you don't wanna, even though it's a good position, you can see well, but you'll be struggling with the weight always trying to tilt forward. So for me right now, this is where I'll probably, you know, of course I can, depend on the uh, situation or what I'm shooting, um, I can move move it around. There are many other mounting points, you know, because this is light so I can decide to play around wherever I want it. I can mount it on the side because I've got another mounting option from Small Rig. So this is really convenient. I can put it on here, I can put it on here, and it's got its own screws all right i'm mounting on one underneath and the other out here now and that is what the shogun really didn't have like my only drawback for this setup is this uh um extension here it's kind of uh you know it's not in the way it's not affecting anything but it's just not uh you know presentable like you know i would want it to be flush i think there are options out there I've never tried this is the atom um this is the one from angel bird uh that's what the one i have one terabyte okay that's uh, the black magic pocket cinema camera 4k it is an hdmi device so if i'm using that with this i'll take this off you don't need this and um, bring this guy in which is the regular module. So you don't have to use this one. You could take it off. There's a button here, like a lash, and you can slide it off. Okay, so you could use just this one on, the, on your camera or your camera. You can even use that with this because this also has an AGM and output, but of course we know um, SDI is better. So, um, if we put this, if we put this one, um, so you can, you have both options. So the two options you have is, one, if you have devices like I do, that's a HDMI, like the Blackmagic, like my Sony. I bought a Sony camera and it's on its way here. It's shipping down here right now. What I have right now is the Blackmagic Pocket Camera and um, the Canon M50 and this one, Sony FS5 Mark II. All right, good cameras, right? But I don't wanna be fighting with pictures every now and then. I want I want some something that will go, you know, getting the black 6K will be too professional in terms of how about YouTube, okay? Does this be benefit my channel? No, because it's really for outdoor jobs, all right? So I want something. This is enough for professional job. This is also enough for professional job. So I want to, I wanted something that would complement one of these. Now going with Canon, if you know, long story. You know, maybe 90D. Mm, I weighed my options and stuff like that. But you know, just a B camera that I can you know stick to this guy and still be um, good for YouTube. Today we have a sponsor, and it's Alec Godwin Studios. Hmm, sounds familiar, huh? Yeah, my studio. And I'm trying to tell you that I have a giveaway coming up anytime soon. A giveaway for the 2,000 subscribers. Hmm, jump on it and get ready. Two prizes coming up, um, watch out. So I will show you the, the Canon that I'm giving away, it will be here in my hands and um, the second prize one I did one one prize for 1000 I'm doing two for 2000 I'm gonna do three for 3000 I'm gonna do four for 4000 
up to the 10,000 points. And that that's my dream. That's really, it's challenging, I know, but I want to do it. So um, if I can get there, then, you know, uh, from the 10,000, then I'll change my strategy and then probably get you one, one or two major stuff, I think, I hope. Okay, so the next um, video, you'll find out all this information. Sponsorship, cut. You could, uh, if you're using my new Sony camera that I'm, that's coming or the Blackmagic Cinema 4K, you could use this adapter, which is a lot lighter. You don't even need it if you're using battery. If you're using your batteries, you don't need this one. You just put in your battery and run and gone. <laughs> okay? But if you do not have, if you're like in your studio situation, you don't need to burn your batteries. You put this one in and you can power up from here. But what if, what if, just for those of you who's wondering how this works, that's why I'm making this video really. But what if um, this is on? Slightly, almost no noticeable difference, slightly heavier. Um, but then again, you can put in these uh, batteries here. If you want to go light, you could get a lot of the smaller ones, but I have the big ones. But I won't use it because of the weight. It will only increase the weight on this side, all right? Which I know this can hold, or the options that I've got so far can hold this one without really tilting because it's still a small um, monitor regardless. So, so, but you have the option of using this one, but I'm usually going by powering from a, from a V-mount battery. But also, if you need the SDI uh, module, and uh, move aside so you can take this off. Now, if um, you want to, if you're using the SDI module like I am right now, by the way, you have these two inputs. One of them is labeled in and out, but you have label on both of them as one and two, but only one is labeled in and out. Uh, but the truth is that if you use any one, it will work as in and out. So whichever you, if you take one for in, then two becomes out. If you take two for in, then one becomes out. It doesn't matter which you choose if you so desire to output. So if you are um, using this module and you have this connected, like in this case, if you are in the studios like I am now and you want to power up, you can still do that. Nice one from Atomos. This is well designed and it can fall in there. It does not take up, take away your SDMI, but it gives you the power option. So, this is your power. Let's assume that we have power connected and you connect in here. One good thing that Atomos also did, which is, well, it's a way to make more money anyway, but here's the good thing. Remember I said each of these two slots will go in and out. So which means anyone can record in, right? Now, you could also get another one of this device another SDI module. In other words, you could attach two modules on one device. And how can you do that? Mm. You could put it on this one. The way I put this in, you could put in another of this. You could put it on it as well. Hmm. Why would you want to do that? Two reasons I see here. Number one is you want to give out more outlets. You want more viewing monitors, more options, DP, AC, client, or something like that with some form of 
um, wireless transmitters. In other words, you have four options to transmit. Now, the next one I suspect is gonna come up is switching, which is multicam view. Now, if Atomos allows that and allow you to mount a second SDI module on this one, it means then that you're gonna have four SDI inputs here, just like this. One, two, three, four. And that will be the four channels for switching on this guy. I'll make another video about the setup um, of this device. Benefits of this will be travel light, stay light makes hardly any difference. Even if I put the two, a second module here, it still will be comfortable. A lot better than the Shogun 7. A lot cheaper, number two, a lot cheaper. Number three, same dynamic range. Four, records as well, you know. And uh, number five would probably be the features that it has. Beside the dynamic range, it is a monitor. You could get all the focus picking, you know, um, exposure, aids that this thing gives you could also have it in here. And what's the result? Better production, better pictures, better outputs, happier clients, and more sales for Atomos. So, Atomos, I've done my part. You did not sponsor this video. I had to sponsor it myself. Hopefully, you guys will repent and bring some freebies my way. Okay, but I'm really glad to be a part of this uh, Adamus family. The only thing that should be stopping you from getting any of these devices uh, has to be money, okay? The ability to afford it, that's the genuine reason, all right? Other than that, don't even think about it. You need this record as it can, and I'm gonna also make another video where I talk about how good, how much it will enhance your workflow for almost any camera. Uh, yes, almost any camera. And I'm gonna test a several, I'm gonna test a couple of cameras and show you what this little guy. Now, I could have said that for the Shogun 7, but it's large. Now with this one, the price and the size, come on, no excuses. You don't need this model for that. If there's anything I forgot, please leave in the comment. I'm sure I'll include in the other videos coming up because I do a review, I do a setup, I do a setup um, um, firmware update, and then you know, working process, different cameras with the module and without the module. Guess what? Sony camera I've got coming in. It's one of the small ones. I'm not saying if it's full frame or not, but it's it's a small portable Sony camera that can be a brother to this one. Go ahead in the description below and tell me what Sony camera you think I'm getting in and you're already standing at 50% chance of winning. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. That's your way in. If you did make it to the end of this video, hmm, you rock. And I'll see you in the next video.